the show starts in three, two, one, go. Good morning, Kane Sport. It's October the 6th, 2023. I'm Gary Furman, the publisher of Kanesport.com. Joined this morning by our managing editor, Matt Shodell, as we discuss the news of the day presented today by Kaneswear, your headquarters for all your Miami Knights merchandise this weekend with the big Miami Knights promotion going on Saturday night at Hard Rock Stadium and all your Canes gear in general, the largest Miami Hurricane store ever created on University Drive in Davie. We'll talk a little bit more about Kaneswear as we move forward in the show. But uh, here we are um, about actually, you know, 36 hours or so uh, before the Miami Hurricanes take on Georgia Tech in that Miami Knights game at Hard Rock Stadium. And uh, Matt, Miami is a comfortable favorite, 21 points, uh, should win this game handily. But I'm going to put a, a, a little asterisk next to that. And uh, Georgia Tech's horrendous on defense, no argument. But if Miami does not show up defensively for this game, uh, this could be a little bit more difficult than people might expect. Uh, Georgia Tech is decent on offense. They've got, you know, they've got some playmakers. And the Miami defense is going to have to come to play. They are not going to be able to mail it in on Saturday night at Hard Rock. Um, if they do come to play, which I personally believe they will, uh, then Miami wins this game, covers the spread going away. Um, and obviously that's what everybody wants to see. There's going to be an enormous number of recruits in the stands. We'll talk about that here in a minute. Um, but first, um, just the, the general overall mindset you believe, Matt Shodell, of this team coming off the bye week and heading into this Georgia Tech game. I mean, hopefully, hopefully they're more interested in the game than I am because you know, unless like unless Taylor Swift starts dating a trainer or something, like I'm just not into this game. You know, I'd rather read about the the Trump civil fraud trial or something like that. I mean, the the perfect example of how disinterested even Miami seems is they tweet out the team captains every week, but this week they tweeted out and it's like a, a, a the picture is just like crammed with players, like as many players. It's almost like a team photo. The team captains this week, you know, it's. It's both Mabagoas, James Williams, Cam Kinchins, and Ez Cooper, Cam McCormick. And if you look at it in, in their, their tweet, it's like there's probably 10 other guys on the side that just couldn't fit in. It's like, you know, I, I don't understand. I thought, I thought they told us that. Didn't they tell us Ryan Rodriguez and Jaden Harris are the two best players on the team? Like, I assume they were somewhere on the sides. They just didn't squeeze them in for some reason. They have to be captains after how, how great they've been in the last two weeks, right? Yeah, I got a text, uh, not yesterday, the day before. Somebody texted me and says, What's wrong with Matt Shodell? And <laughs> I, I, I mean, you know how many times I've heard that? I've heard that. I, I yeah, I got this tag. Like, what's wrong? I said, what do you mean? Like, he wakes up every morning and he is the most negative, crankiest, curmudgeon human. Because I don't want to I've... be here. It's not that hard to figure out. <laughs> I'm trying to get voted off. That that was not my explanation. My explanation was, you know what? I think he's just cranky. Um, you know. Um, you know, we have very tight reins covering this team. It's very difficult when you can't talk about injuries. You're not supposed to find out about injuries. Uh, and, uh, you know, availability is very varied and things like that. So, you know, I said this is not the easiest team to cover anymore. This is probably the most difficult uh, period of Matt Shodell's entire journalistic career. And that's why he's so cranky. Oh, that was you. my that was my explanation. Thank you for But I'm you. starting to wonder because... It's like you're now annoyed by a photo of team captains. Well, thanks for thanks for calling me uh, saying I have a journalistic career. Um, but yeah, look, I mean, I find the little things that annoy me, and yeah, that photo annoyed a me. The photo of the team captains. The photos of the team captains annoy me because they don't all go out at the beginning of the game. They're, all those guys in that picture don't go out. It's like three or four of them go out. Like you know, I I don't I don't know. It's just me. I mean. Like, let us talk to them or something. Let's do a story on them. You don't just need a photo. Like, hey, every here's here's a million team captains this week. Like, no, you know, one captain on offense, one captain on defense, maybe another wild card, you know, like, um, what is it in fantasy football? A, uh, <laughs> when you have the extra receiver, tight end that you can throw in there, running back, whatever. Um, but anyway, you know, like, uh, the only thing we're going to find out this week about this team is, you know, for those that live in or near the Grove, you know, we'll find out if the team's locale or planta. Uh, do you know what that means, Gary? 
I assume those are restaurants. Yeah, so locale, they serve like, you know, hamburgers. They used to have a great turkey burger, which they discontinued for no apparent reason, which was what I would always get. You know, chicken sandwiches, like real good stuff, real food. And Planta is this is this vegan place that I went two nights ago where like they have, you know, crab rangoon and a spicy crab hand roll and like all this other, you know, these other things that appear to be like meat, but they're not. They're just uh, something that they've somehow morphed to taste like crab or meat or something. I don't know. Um, so, you know, so that, that's where I was a couple of nights ago. But yeah, so so that's fake food. Like, is this a fake team or a real team? Is this locale or is it or is it Planta? And Planta, by the way, is, is an excellent is an excellent restaurant, but it just is, to me, it's fake food. It's vegan. Um, like, if you're going to be vegan and be a restaurant, like, just serve, you know, stuff that vegan people would eat. Don't, like, pretend it's actually they're eating meat. Like, you don't need to do that, you know? It's not even impossible burgers there. It's just, like, they do weird stuff, and, and they make it, they just call it, you know... <laughs> They call it a, a California roll when it's not a California roll because a California roll actually would have imitation crab meat or real crab meat, things like that. But anyway, um, but I don't remember. Wait, what you, you, on, I, you might be onto something without even realizing it, I'm sure, because if you realized that you wouldn't have said it intentionally. But you mentioned fake food. And in a way, I think that we're going to find out whether the Miami Hurricanes are real I mean, fake is a little harsh, but but we're going to find out if they're a real mature football team. Let's 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 leave it at that this weekend. Because if they are, they're going to show up ready to play. They're going to take care of business against Georgia Tech, and then move on to their next big moment against North Carolina. If they're not mature, if they're still learning how to be a real player in college football, then they will show up uneven and sloppy and. Uh, this will be more of a dogfight than they want. Wow, that's uh, an amazing. I'm, that's I'm, an amazing. That's an amazing analysis. So you're saying that the fake restaurant and the real restaurant could be the fake team and the real team. That's exactly what I said. I didn't want to say fake. I didn't want to call them a fake team. That's that's too hard. You said I didn't understand what I was saying. No, that's Obviously, pretty, I did. That's for negative Nancy. I'm not using Georgia I'm, Tech. I, if they I didn't want to Georgia, use that term, I didn't want to use that term. If they lose to but, Georgia Tech, they're frauds. A fraud yeah, by I mean, definition yeah, is fake. Yeah, you can't be a great team and lose to this Georgia Tech team, period. I mean, that's just true. They're, they're, they would be frauds. They they would be masquerading as undefeated, amazing, as undefeated, amazing new culture team, and they'd be a fraud. That's, by definition, fake, Gary. Like, use real words. Yeah, no, be like, I don't think anyone's I don't calling them a fake team. I don't want to upset anybody. I don't want to call them fake. If they lose to Georgia Tech, they're a fake be team. Rude. I'm not, I didn't talk about losing. I talked about looking sloppy. And I don't want to say that if they look sloppy, they're a fake team. But a mature team that is ready to be a contender for the ACC title this year, let's put it in those terms, comes out on Saturday night under the lights at home in an, what hopefully will be a decent atmosphere. Hopefully they'll have at least 50,000 people there. Um, hopefully the entertainment, in-game entertainment people have been doing their work these last couple weeks. They're going to have some nice music queued up and and make it a very fun Jovial atmosphere at Hard Rock on Saturday night. This is their opportunity. We're going to talk about the recruit list in a moment. You got a lot of big time recruits coming. I'm expecting a big commit this weekend. I mean, a lot of very positive things are going on around this program. Game day entertainment, people. Don't screw this up. This is your moment, okay? Uh, make sure that you guys got some good stuff uh, lined up for Saturday night. Uh, but if they are that mature team like what I'm talking about, they will come out and take care of business in a very classy, professional way on Saturday night, Matt, uh, against the Georgia Tech team. That's just not that good because their defense is horrendous. I mean, honestly, I'm done talking about this matchup. But my, Miami should roll over them. If they don't look good and still win, you know, that's not great heading into a North Carolina game where, you know, like, for instance, if Georgia Tech throws for a lot of yards and Miami wins by 21 points, you know, fans will be pretty happy. Uh, I think that's probably what's going to happen, by the way. Uh, but um, it's, it, it wouldn't be a great sign coming off a of bye week where you know if there's anything that right now this Miami team is maybe struggling with a little bit. It's it's just man-on-man coverage on the from the boundary corners. Um, the, the numbers have not been great when Jaden Davis and DeCorey Couch have been targeted. It, it's just a fact. You know, you look at the pro football focus, you know, they're giving up, I don't know, 60% plus receptions, decent amount of yards. Not great. Uh so if, if that continues, if there are breakdowns in the secondary against Georgia Tech, uh, 
things like that, that's a reason for concern because Georgia Tech's passing game, while it's good, maybe very good, it's not as good as North Carolina's, period. It's just not. It's a whole different animal. So you really want to see some progress from some of the miscues they've had in the passing defense because that's really the only, the only thing that any negative Nancy can point to at this point that's been not great. Everything else has been great. The, the rushing offense has been amazing. The, the reshaped offensive line, revamped offensive line has been off the charts. You know, I thought they'd be good. They've been amazing. Uh, Tyler Van Dyke, 100% back on point. You know, struggled last year um, under Josh Gaddis, you know, in a system that didn't fit him at all. And he's been just lights out, absolutely amazing. The receiver concern, yeah, there's, you know, there's no real number one receiver. People will say Xavier Restrepo is. I would argue he's probably not. Uh, it's just Tyler likes to throw to him, you know, <laughs> he's probably Colby. If there's a number one receiver, I would actually say Colby Young at this point, um, just because I think he presents the, the best downfield um, pass matchup uh, where he can over, you know jump over cornerbacks, make big plays, you know, um, things like that. But all three of those guys with Jacoby George have been excellent. Excellent. If you add Elijah Arroyo, if he does come back this weekend, um, you know, I keep hearing mixed things and if he's actually going to be back 100 percent or not. But if he's at 100 percent, he also adds a new dimension. Uh, now. You know, obviously, you can't ask Shannon Dawson. I, I was at the press conference. I wasn't going to ask him this. You can't ask him, you know, uh, you know, are you going to throw the ball to Elijah Arroyo? Because they have not used the tight ends at all. And maybe that is a secret weapon they're saving for North Carolina. You know, maybe that's not something you do against Georgia Tech because you don't need to. But when you're in, in a high-scoring game that I expect it to be at North Carolina, you need every ounce of offense you can muster and, um, you know, yeah, you can get some yards running, you can use your wide receivers, but if you also have the tight end making plays, you know, that's a whole different animal uh, that they really have not been able to show on film at all. And North Carolina would be totally unprepared for that if that is something that Miami is able to do with Elijah because he just, you know, he hasn't really done much to this point, right? But we know he has the ability to do it. So maybe he could be a secret weapon for that game. Um, but, you know, right now I'm extremely optimistic. It, it, the, the, the weird thing with, with, with college football and you can say i'm negative right but the truth is oh, no why would we say that well the truth is college football is a week-to-week -week game like i expect them to i expected them for instance to beat texas a&m i predicted a win i expect them to to handily beat georgia tech by over 21 points uh now if they don't you know if they if i had you know if texas a&m had won for instance people would say oh match Odell's wrong or if georgia tech gives miami a fight and miami wins by three oh match Odell was wrong you know, this is a week by week sport and it's it's very hard to predict what's going to happen. Now, I've looked extensively at Georgia Tech's film and I we posted the film on on the website. You guys have seen for yourselves what I've seen, the, the clips I picked, why Georgia Tech's really bad. You know, that's what you've seen, why they're really bad. And you've seen some of what they can do in the passing game. And that's about it. Uh, we've all seen what Miami can do. So, you know, I, I like to be rational. I like to use data points, analytics, that sort of thing, because that's just how my mind's always worked, uh, because I'm a boring loser. And when I do that and I sort of crunch it all together, like that's where I come up with, that's where I came up with Miami's going to beat Texas A&M, because Texas A&M, like I said, I didn't think they were very good heading into that game, you know, watching their previous games this year. Um, they the played pretty game. well since that game, though. Yeah, they played really well. But I was looking more at, you know, they had, they had beaten the team easily the week before, whatever. You know, I was looking at certain things, and the way they were doing things and the way Miami would match up with that. And it just seemed like Miami should win that game. And they did. Uh, a &M plays Alabama this weekend. We'll know all we need to know after they do that. Yeah. Well, a &M's always given Alabama problems, even when Alabama's great and a yeah, not. But, so. but, but if they're any good at all, we'll yeah, know this weekend. Yeah, they yeah, got Alabama sure. at home. Yeah, 100%. You know. 100%. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, what I was saying was when you crunch all that stuff up and what you've seen from Georgia Tech and you have a bigger mass quantity of plays now than what we had against Texas A&M, for instance, to look at. Like, you can see Miami, Miami's easily going to win this game unless Miami loses it on them on their own. Like, Miami would have to lose this game. You know, Georgia Tech's not going to beat Miami. There's no way that happens. But Miami could lose because Miami could come in and do what we've seen in the past, coming off a of bye week, uh, and just not be focused. And, I, you know, I can't imagine that in a Mario Cristobal system. It would be extremely disappointing if they didn't come out playing really well and winning easily. But, it, you know, this stuff happens in college football. So... You know, that's why we play the game, right? We'll see what happens and hope for the best. But I like to expect the worst because I'm always I'm always pleasantly surprised. Like I always tell you, Gary, being negative is the most positive thing you can do because then all you can be is pleasantly surprised. You go to a movie, you think it's going to be amazing, 
And it's amazing. You're just like, oh yeah, it was what I expected. But if you go to a movie and you think it's gonna be bad and it's amazing, you're like, oh my God, that was such a great movie. I'm so glad I went. And you're really happy. So be negative in order to be happy. Like it's just a natural phenomena and, and try it once in a while. It actually works really well. All right, be negative to be happy. Yeah. Uh, I can't do that right now. There, it, it just it, it doesn't work with what I'm getting ready to talk about. There's no reason to be negative right now because we're getting ready to talk about recruiting and and there's a lot of big time recruits coming to this game. But uh, before we switch gears to recruiting, I do want to tell everybody that we do have a couple stories on the website as we continue our build up to this game. Um, we speak to DB Jaden Davis, who tells us that Miami's not overlooking Georgia Tech. Uh, he has been impressed with the speed that he's seen. Uh, from the Yellow Jackets in, in this week of preparation. So uh, you can read that on the website this morning. We also have a story uh, talking to cornerback Daryl Porter, who will be put to the test on Saturday night. He says no letdowns off the bye game. Uh, he's expecting strong play from the secondary against uh, Georgia Tech's solid passing attack. Uh, so we've got those things for you. Um, we also have our You Bet Kane Sports Show with Lee Sterling, where we talk a little bit about Miami, Georgia Tech, and some of the other games in college football this week. But um, a massive, massive, massive uh, recruiting night for Miami is in store. Um, it's so big that first, I think what I will do here is talk about Canesware first. Um, Canesware has that new store you've heard us telling you about uh, really all season. Here it is. That's their brand new store in Davie. That's just like a, th a third of it. I mean, it, this place is massive. They have all kinds of really cool Canes merchandise. And if you look up there on the jersey shelf at the top of the picture there, and you see that number, that number 22 jersey, that's the Miami Knights jersey. And they've got a full assortment of those Miami Knights jerseys. They've got polos, hats, uh, all kinds of stuff that will get you ready uh, to, to go to uh, Hard Rock on Saturday night. Uh, there, there's the hat for you to check out. Um, there's the t uh, one, of, one of the T-shirts for you to check out. And here's a close-up for you guys of the jersey, the Miami Knights jersey uh, that you can buy at Canesware. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to go during the week, you can go on your way to the stadium, just flip your clothes, your shirt off, and put on that jersey, and you'll be all decked out ready uh, for Miami Knights. Uh, Canesware has the largest selection of Miami Hurricanes gear in town, more than you could ever imagine. T-shirts, jerseys, polos, hats, hoodies, flags, decals, magnets. Anything that you can think of, they probably have with a Canes logo at Canes Wear. Um, they have all different sizes for men, women, kids, babies. And you even can outfit your pet at Canes Wear. Uh, they'll, they'll sell you a little outfit for your dog. I mean, it, it, that's that's how deep their merchandise is. Uh other teams are in season right now, Inter-Miami, Dolphins, Panthers. You can get that stuff there as well. Um, no better time to get stocked up than right now at Canesware at 2655 South University Drive in Davie, uh, right next door to that big sub shop that we talk about all the time uh, where they sell the monster subs and so you can uh, get some food while you get your merchandise. And if you live out of town, you could shop Canesware at canesware.com. Uh, it's more than a store. It is an experience. So stop by at 2655 South University Drive in Davie or go to their website at canesware.com. Canesware is your headquarters for all your Miami Hurricanes merchandise needs. All right. Take a drink of water here real quick. And we are going to talk recruiting because there's a lot of it to talk about. Uh, just a whole assortment of top recruits coming to this game. Uh, None more important than number one wide receiver, the number one ranked player in the country. He's presently an Ohio State commit. He is from Hollywood, Florida, Chaminade. His name is Jeremiah Smith. To me, an absolute must get for the Miami program. And it's not going to be easy. This is no layup. It's committed to Ohio State. Jeremiah Smith is a generational talent. Uh, this is Michael Irvin, potentially. This is Andre Johnson, potentially. Uh, this kid has that type of raw ability and talent. Uh, I can promise you NIL is not going to be an issue with Jeremiah Smith. Uh, I'm sure the Miami Collective will do whatever they got to do. Uh, Miami will not be outbid, for example, or anything like that. Uh, Jeremiah Smith will know that if he comes to Miami, 
he and his family are going to be extremely well taken care of, and he will have a chance in his hometown to own the ta- own the city. And I'm not going to compare him to Messi. I mean, Messi's a worldwide, you know, superstar. I'm not going to compare him to Jimmy Butler or or anything like that. He's a kid coming out of high school, but he has a chance over the next three four years to be one of the top dogs in South Florida if he comes to Miami. Uh, I think what Miami has to hope right now is that that will trump anything that Ohio State has to offer when push comes to shove in December. But uh, they get a chance to showcase themselves live and in person this Saturday night in the Georgia Tech game, and it's going to be huge. And uh, they've got several other wide receivers that are going to be visiting at the same time. Keep an eye on Georgia decommit Nykar. You've been seeing us write about him. we got a story on the website on him this morning. Uh, he decommitted from Georgia about a week and a half ago. Miami is in the driver's seat. He's visiting this weekend. He's going to spend time on campus. He's going to be at the game. If things go well, I think we could be looking at a NICAR commitment uh, sooner rather than later. On threes, Chad Simmons has a uh, pr- recruiting prediction machine them to Miami. So there's a lot of buzz up there in Georgia. Chad Simmons is from Georgia. A lot of buzz up there in Georgia about Miami's traction with NICAR. He is an exceptional talent. They are going to try to sell these guys on, and along with Josiah Trader and Chance Robinson, who both will also be in attendance. Four guys, four receivers. They are going to try to sell these guys on coming to Miami and playing together. Matt, uh, it, it seems like the number is huge with four. Um, but I, I mean, this is a big, when you look at the talent of these four guys, this is a big recruiting year for wide receivers here in South Florida in particular, even though Nykar's from Georgia. Uh, you can't overstate what this means, this opportunity in a night game at Hard Rock to secure the receiver position potentially for years to come. Yeah, Mario Cristobal is a brilliant tactician. You know, I compared him to Julius Caesar a couple of days ago when we did the show. And uh, he, he is. He's like, a. It, it's like a, recruiting is a battle. Recruiting is a war. And how many times in the past have you and I been so disheartened up in the press box when they've brought a million recruits, top recruits, to the FSU or the Clemson game and they get slaughtered? And it's like, say goodbye to those recruits, you know, at least for the short term. Uh, you know, so I love the fact that it's a night game Stadium will be loud, rocking. You know, it's Georgia Tech. They're going to win. You know, they're going to have fans that are excited. They're going to make plays. Georgia Tech's defense is terrible. It's going to be an exciting game. I'd rather have these top recruits, the Jeremiah Smiths and the Nye Cars, at this game than the Clemson game. Call me crazy because what you don't want is a great Clemson defense sort of being able to clamp down on the Miami offense. Then the Miami pitch line becomes, hey, you saw how rough we were on offense, Jeremiah. We need a guy like you to, to really be able to score points against Clemson. Instead of, you could be a part of the, the six touchdown passes we had. You know, you can light it up. Look at what we did against Georgia Tech. Like, that's how it's going to be when you're here. That's a much better selling point than, yeah, we look bad, but you can change that. You know, we've heard that for 20 years, right? That's been their pitch for 20 years to recruits. Be a part of the change. You know, we're terrible. We need guys like you to help rebuild the program. It's much easier to recruit when you're saying, we're already there. And now you can be part of it. Like that's how you that's how you build. That's how you build championships, consecutive championships over and over and over again, championship level team. Now, the other thing I want to mention is, uh, you know, like FSU last year was basically an ad to every recruit there for Florida State. You know, uh, yeah. that will not be the case this year. Mario is bringing them to the Georgia Tech game. Most of these a lot of these top <laughs> kids, a lot will be back for Clemson. But I'm glad he's not just, you know, can I say pussyfooting on the air? I think it's an old phrase. Gary knows that it has nothing to do with sex. OK. He's not pussyfooting around with the Clemson game and bringing everyone for that. Bring them all for Georgia Tech also. Let them see that. If Georgia Tech goes great, tell them that. Watch Clemson on TV, just in case. <laughs> uh, I'm sort of, that's, that's tongue in cheek. Uh, but the other thing to keep in mind that I know Gary hates talking about this, but I just uh, want to bring it up. Miami has 22 commits. Gary's convinced there'll be another commitment soon, which I agree with. 23 commits. There's nine seniors on the roster. Ten if Kim McCormick doesn't get granted his extra year. I personally think he'll get granted the year, believe it or not. Um, and they're at the 85 limit, 84, 85. Uh, they want to bring in more, you know, Mario keeps talking about they're going to bring in more transfers also. So, again, he's going to have to trim the fat off of a very young roster and make some really interesting decisions. This is a conversation we'll be having 
you know, in December and January, well, mainly in December when the portal opens again. But I want to bring it up now because it's really interesting to think about, right? There's no limit on the amount of recruits that Miami can bring in this year, period. There's, there's no limit. They could bring in 50 recruits, 50 transfers. They could bring in an entire new roster if they wanted to. That's just the rules right now. He's not going to stop. He knows that this team needs to stack a couple more recruiting classes. He plainly told us that, actually, in an answer to one of my questions at the press conference this week. He said, we need two more recruiting classes. And I agree with him. Um, and this is one of those two, right? So he already has a great one from last year. He wants to have another great one this year. But with that comes, you know, having a really young up and coming roster where you're going to have to jettison some guys who probably should be good enough to stay here. And that's what's going to be some, some really interesting, a really interesting thing to watch because right now they're probably going to be at about minus 20, minus 25. If you include five or 10 transfers that they're going to probably try to get, right? And go ahead and try to knock 20 people off the current roster that are eligible to return. And you're going to, when you come to number 16, 17, and 18, you know, are you talking about Jaleel Skinner? You know, like, who are you talking about at that point? Like, you're Jaleel talking Skinner about players, will be in the portal after this year. Well, you're sure. probably right. But, but what I'm trying to say is you're talking about players who have quite a bit of ability, you know. Um, so, you know, it's, it's going to be really, really interesting because, you know, they have, they, right now they have four running backs that are all in the exact same class. They're all qualified as freshmen. A.J. Allen, Trevante Citizen, Chris Johnson, and Mark Fletcher are all technically freshmen. And none of them are, are, are redshirting because Trevante already redshirted last year. So, I mean, you can apply for another one, I guess. But, he, you know, it's not always that easy to get it. So, like, what happens there? Does Trevante have to go in the portal? I mean, they're going to have to find numbers that they need to get rid of besides the seniors. And you look at the junior class and, you know, you can't get rid of Shamar Kirk because A, he's good, and B, he already transferred. He, you know, unless he graduates, it's hard for him to find another home. Um, the only other juniors that you can look at is Lou Cristobal, but they're not getting rid of him, and Zion Nelson. The other guys all have to return. They're all outstanding players, unless they go to the NFL early, which creates another number. And then you look at you know Jakari Brown, the sophomore class. Maybe he's got to go. Mike Redding, maybe him. Jaleel Skinner, maybe. Uh, Sagapolo already transferred in. Like You're ending his career unless he's a graduate. Same thing with John Dennis. You're ending his career unless he's a graduate. These are tough decisions. Uh, that Mars got to make, and that's it. The other guys all have to return. You know, NS Cooper, you need him. Jalen Rivers, you need him. Arroyo, you need him. Cheney, you need him. Those are the only other sophomores. And now you're just looking at a ridiculous, this is on offense now. Now you're looking at a ridiculously large freshman class of 18 players. Uh, it's hard to get rid of a freshman or a redshirt freshman, right? They haven't really had a chance to show what they can do and develop unless you really made a, really swung and missed. Uh, and on the defensive side, you know, the juniors that you're going to have back if they'll come back, you know, Jafari, Harvey, Akeem Mesador, Leonard Taylor. Jared Harrison Hunt, um, Chance Williams, Thomas Gore. You know, those are guys who all will be seniors if they don't go pro. Linebackers, KJ Cloyd, Corey Flagg, Maui Goa. I don't think you get rid of any of them. They're all eligible to come back. Maybe Kinchins goes pro early. Pro early, maybe not. Uh, then you got Daryl Porter Jr. He already transferred in. Tough to get rid of him unless he graduated, and he's been okay. James Williams, unless he goes pro. And Devontae Brown, who transferred in. It's hard to get rid of him unless he graduated. And now you're looking at again at sophomores, right? And they just bought in the Burroughs kid. Nigel Kelly, you're not getting rid of. But Saints, you're not getting rid of. Chase Smith, okay. Brian Ballum, okay. He already tried to go in the portal and they convinced him to come back. And then you're not getting rid of Jay Davis Richard. You're not getting rid of Demetrius Freeney. Now you're looking at all freshmen again. They will be jettisoning freshmen and true freshmen. Mark my words. There will be freshmen and redshirt freshmen on this year's team that will be told to go in the transfer portal after this year because there is not room on the roster to keep them. And it's a shame because it's the NCAA's fault. This is not Mario's fault. This is the NCAA's fault. There are players who want to stay here and compete, want to be part of this process, want to be on Mario's team that will have to be told to leave because of an NCAA rule that it used to be 100 plus players on a roster. They made it 85. And you don't think 85 is fair? I think 85 is a lot of number. That's a lot of players. They're going to they're gonna have to they're gonna have to kick off freshmen and redshirt freshmen, make room because it's the NCAA's fault, Gary, because the NCAA changed the 25 initials rule. That's why it's the NCAA's fault. That's why the NCAA should fix the problem and make it more than 85 for a few years. If they want to make it so that programs can take 30, 35, 40 recruits and transfers in a given year and just say goodbye to players that they don't necessarily want to say goodbye to just because they need that experienced guy because they want to win now, is that fair to the, to the freshman or redshirt freshman who wants to still develop in a system that he loves? This is supposed to be about the student-athlete. And the NCAA, the NCAA has created 
the problem for Mario, that now Mario's got to break some kids' hearts after this year. It's not right. All right, well, um, so getting back to recruiting. So you've got all those receivers coming in. You've got uh, Saquon Patterson coming in. That's this a committed safety. Um, Elijah Lofton, tight end commit. Cam Pruitt, linebacker commit. Uh, OJ, uh, Fred Reek, uh, defensive back commit. All those 2024 commits will be there. And then you've got a bunch of really good uh, 2025 prospects. Uh, you've got Armando Blount, the five-star defensive lineman who's already committed to Miami. Uh, a four-star wide receiver, Nashawn Montgomery, that Miami's doing extremely well with. Um, some other key guys in the 2025 class, uh, Dallas Wilson, a four-star wide receiver who's an Oregon commit. Uh, Randy Adarika, a four-star defensive lineman. Carlton Smith, a four-star linebacker. Hilton Stubbs, a four-star safety. Uh, goes on and on and on. A lot of four-stars. Running back Byron Lewis uh, from American Heritage. So, uh a whole lot of recruits, and there's even some top 2026 20, kids coming in as well. We've got the entire list on the website that you guys uh, can check out, as well as um, a few other stories. I mentioned Byron Lewis. We've got a story with him. Uh, he's the four-star running back out of American Heritage. Uh, we talked to him about uh, what he's hoping to see out of Miami when he comes to the game this weekend, um, we've got a story on top 100 safety, uh, Hilton Drake Stubbs from Jacksonville Mandarin. Uh, you could check out, you know, the latest with him. Uh, and we also do a story with Cam Pruitt, who's the Miami linebacker commit. Uh, he's making his first trip to South Florida since his uh, commitment. And he talks about his excitement level. Um yeah in that so do, do, Azubi, uh, do Azubi and Wagner ever get a break at all do you I mean do you ever let them like just have dinner no how many stories have they written about recruiting now a lot let me tell you something there was they did they did this show yesterday morning thank goodness and mm -hmm. and um I don't know who else is doing the show because somebody posted in the messages uh thank god they got rid of the old guys but I don't do old guys do this show like I don't know who they're talking about who else does the show <laughs> besides the four of us there must be some old guys that are like pirating your channel or something you better you better check that out mm -hmm. But uh, nah, man, there's just so much recruiting. I mean, you know, this is Mario Cristobal's program yeah. now, and the recruiting is insane all he the loves, time. He loves recruiting as he much as it. as much as Manny Diaz hated it. That's how much Mario loves it. There could not have been a more of a 180 flip between two head coaches consecutively consecutively than I've ever seen ever anywhere. Like in terms of a coach who just so is invested and just he he loves it. Like he enjoys Mario. Legit enjoys recruiting i've never seen a head coach who actually literally tells you he loves it like he really really likes getting to know recruits getting to know their families and that whole aspect of being a top 10 recruiting class he'd rather have a top five if you ask him would you rather have a top five recruiting class or a top five team i'm not sure he wouldn't flip a coin like that's how much <laughs> he wants to win in recruiting you know well, um, we do cover it like maniacs. And if you're not yet a subscriber to our website, please, please, please come on board. Your subscriptions are what allow us to do what we do every single day. They've allowed us to increase our staff this year so that we can cover all this recruiting for you guys every day and and do extra things and uh, like this show and, and, and some other stuff. And uh, so uh, if you're not yet a subscriber to canesport.com, your subscription means a lot to us. Come on over. You can get the, the first month for a dollar to try it out. We're sure you'll like it and stay with us hopefully forever. Um, but uh, do that. And if you're on YouTube right now, hit your subscribe and like buttons. It helps us with the algorithms at, at YouTube. And uh, we would appreciate that as well. So big weekend for Miami, as big in recruiting as it is on the field in the game. And uh, we will be all over it this weekend for you with coverage on the website. We will be back with this show on Monday morning. So thank you so much for starting out your day with us today. Uh, for Matt Shodell, I'm Gary Furman. Have a great weekend. For those of you coming to the game, we'll see you at The Rock on Saturday night. Goodbye, everybody.